Good morning and welcome to this episode of Talking to Artists. I'm uh, really excited today to talk to Jane uh, Fleetwood Morrow. But first of all, I just want to give a huge shout out and thank you so much to everybody who came out uh, to the North Toronto uh, Group of Artists Studio Tour where we actually set up our tents outside uh, for the real like, time, saw real people for about six months, which was really amazing. Um, we had a, a ton of people through, everybody followed their social protocols um, and so that was really wonderful to talk to people about art and I think people also really really enjoyed the opportunity for them to come out and see the work in real life. So it was so popular that um, as of uh, sort of two weeks on the 26th of September we're going to do it again as part of Art Walk in the Square which is an online program but then a couple of artists that are doing the, uh, the show are actually doing some in-person events as well. So I'm going to have about 10 artists at my studio at Art Alchemy so I welcome and join you encourage you to come by and check it out. So right now I'm going to invite Jane Fleetwood Morrow to uh, connect to the, uh, I've got her right here. Jane, she's another uh, amazing artist who um, who does a lot of the same art shows and, uh, oh, oh, here she comes. Hi. My gosh, it worked. <laughs> Woo -hoo! I was like, <laughs> this was my worst nightmare. I'm kept <laughs> flipping back and thinking, oh no, is it this button? Is it that button? So Yay. Well, and it would be it would be actually be kind of an amazing ir irony then if this is the first one, fingers crossed, that actually goes through without any technical difficulties. <laughs> it would be because I'm the most challenged. <laughs> well, you know, I, I always think I've got a whole list of things I do. So it's like, okay, remember to put the timer on, remember to get my mic charged, all that kind of stuff. And invariably, there's something I, think, I, know. I don't know. But I, I had a I had a interview like this because I was doing it with um, Gregoire from Brussels. And I was oh, yeah. working on a video with him. Um, it was interviewing with a, a collector across across the pond. Um, cool. And afterwards, I realized, oh shoot, I had my fan on the whole time. So I <laughs> just keeping my. I haven't seen the video yet, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed that it didn't interfere. <laughs> There's too many I details. A, I know. I did one a few weeks ago with uh, Gordon Leverton. And so he's got this amazing space outside with oh, this yeah. like, great backdrop and stuff. I think I watched but it. But there was, there was like construction happening. And I'm like, I hope that that huge construction crane sound doesn't come through. The video. No. Well, actually, I like that about your uh, interviews because it's like real life. It makes, makes me feel yeah. more at ease <laughs> for all the things well, that can too. go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, and things will, right? So that's why I figure if you try and control everything, it just creates a lot of stress versus yeah. kind of going, you know what, shit happens. So true. Let's <laughs> just kind of move, true. move through it. True. So, which actually, I mean, I wanted to definitely want to come back and talk about, uh, it seems like a perfect segue into kind of risk and, and I, I thought it was really interesting, you know, reading your, your uh, philosophy of how you work and how you approach things and our background. It's, a, it's almost interesting because it seems like there's such amazing parallels, but I really mm -hmm. loved your whole conversation about kind of embracing risk and using risk as part of your your work kind of environment because yeah. I do exactly the same thing and it's that combination of having a plan of where you want to go and having a sense oh, yeah. of what you want to do and then just letting the process do its own thing but yeah do you want it's, to talk about that a bit sure sure I mean it's kind of interesting when you brought it up because in other aspects of my life I'm not a risk taker um, but I think within my own art uh, I guess I've been doing it for so long and um, even thinking about today I because in through COVID, I've sort of had a bit of different time and I'm looking back to where I began and uh, thinking, how can the two merge? In fact, I, I can swing this around and show you, like I pulled this out of my office and this is a painting. Um, I don't oh, wow. Like, I can see it. I'm losing your, the sound a little bit, but I can definitely see oh, the painting. Sorry. It's, um, I did it. There. There we go. But yeah, I did it in university. Amazing. And, you know, it's still all about the color. And, but I have a, like my uh, sort of beginning was with Bonnard and Vuillard and Matisse. And those were the, uh, really, I felt like they were my professors at university. Not because I worked in the art history library not the real professors, mm -hmm. but uh, when last year, I just like taking a risk on a, on a whim sort of, I said, okay, I'm, I see there's an art show of Bonnard in Copenhagen and there's over a hundred paintings. I'm going. So I went all by myself <laughs> and uh, I went for a week and I 
you know, went to the show and then by the end of the week I figured out the show and I got in there at the uh, went to the end and I watched was sort of walking around for half an hour on my own and um, so I think I'm bringing coming back a little bit to that beginning but yeah you know you start working and then things start happening and I think I was like that in my like I had a long career of being an art educator and uh, that was my philosophy with my students. I, my last sort of gig was I was at Crescent Boys School. I was the lower school art teacher there for 20 years. Mm-hmm. And, and always it was like I'd have a plan and then we'll see what happens. And then if some kids came up with an idea, then I'd say, okay, this is now called the Billy Project and let's go with your direction. But not like, like oh, do whatever you want. There, there had to be like a sense of where we were going, but with flexibility. Yeah, I, I well, do like that. Yeah, it's like it's like we said to say in uh, with our, our creative adventures event. It's about embracing serendipity. So yeah. you can't you can't totally have no sense of where you're going. Exactly. But if something interesting along the way journey comes in, yeah. then you kind of yeah. you don't kind of so stay so focused on your end journey, right? Yeah, like the happy accidents are the best. Absolutely. And you know, if, <laughs> exactly. you, think, you think about like I've been painting for years now, and color is my thing. In fact, at university. But like, it's kind of ironic. I went to Queens. You think of it as a really traditional school. Our professors were like way out there. I don't even think they taught us anything. But what we had was time. So um, yeah. a lot of my, so when I started teaching, I started to learn all about color theory. But my introduction to painting was intuitive. Uh, and I was kind of rely on both now. But even now, like I'm still, even like with these color skates behind me, like there's layers and layers of color. And sometimes I think, oh, I know what's going to happen. And then <laughs> Totally is not what's going to happen. And you have to decide, do you want to go that way or try and pull it back in? Or um... Yeah, it, it's, it's funny because I actually um, got into Queens for fine arts. Oh, yeah. And I, and I didn't, yeah, and I didn't go because at that time it was all about um, like, um, like Mother Well and very, very um, abstract, the very kind of totally. really cutting edge abstract, that right? And I'm I like, yeah, there. no, I'm just not an abstract artist. Yeah. I don't like abstract. <laughs> so I had a very Western which also had a really, um, it was a, the same thing, these long six hour studios where you had a lot of time to play. Yeah. And just funny story, cause I just did this um, in-person show and someone was reading my bio and she's like, oh, you went to Western as well. I said, yeah. And she said, well, how did you find Patterson? You were this painting teacher. And I paused, right? And she goes, yeah. what did you think? And I'm like, well, he was a really crappy teacher. Like he might've been a great artist, yeah. but he was a crappy teacher. He had no idea how to actually teach people. So I basically went through school saying, yeah, I didn't really learn how to paint because yeah. I know I feel that. It, it's kind of interesting or, or, but, but then what happened with me is like, I guess it was third year. They kind of left you alone. And I w- went into this, um, we had a room where you, they grew plants and I went in, I don't know why I did this still life painting. Everything up to then was like, they, they didn't like anything realistic in that, nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that's why a lot of the students left. But uh, they kind of, one teacher came in, professor, actually, I did love him. And, and it was this uh, really, really dark, I still have it. It's quite interesting to see it um, still life. But he said, oh, you keep going with that. And then they ignored me. Like, they just kept ignoring me and ignoring me. And then my, I ended up doing really well. And I think I was, I was one of the ones that broke away from that. But it was Bonnard and Vuillard. They were like my... Mm-hmm. Uh, my gurus and uh and i learned about color and painting by myself <laughs> well and i think you're right like you have the opportunity to play i had a really great teacher who um he was a um he was a printmaker but he used to make his own paper he was really into paper making oh, and he yeah. developed this paper maker uh, and so i had learned really early on i got along with him really well because he was just so interesting but he also rambled all over the place so a lot of people had a real really, really frustrated because he didn't tell them exactly what he wanted them to do right but I learned that you had to make sure you didn't really wear anything that was really something you valued because if you were doing paper making, he'd literally look at your t-shirt and kind of go, that would make great paper. Yeah. Like, can I just cut a little piece out of the bottom? And you're like, well, I'm kind of wearing it. I know, it's funny. <laughs> but you know, but I think I, you're right. The playing is, is so critical and it's so yeah. critical to keep that into your practice yeah. today too. Yeah. I think really it was um, so great to have four years of trying all these things and and putting the time to it so that by the time i by the time i left i think they did a good job in making us feel like we didn't need anybody anymore like Mm -hmm. you know we we were on our direction of still doing what what you know the risk-taking stuff but uh anyway yeah that was a while ago yeah 
But I, well, it's interesting because for me, because I graduated with a, um, my sorry, my major was photography actually at the oh. time, um, and so I played a lot in the dark room, and I love that again that sort of serendipity of oh, you don't oh, know exactly always what yeah. what you're going to get. And then when photography became digital for me, I just wasn't as interested, and it took me wow. years to figure out it's because with digital photography you eliminate the risk. Oh, you can try something, oh, yeah. and you can control yeah. edit, right? Yeah. You don't actually have, have to commit the same way. So I know we were going to talk about something else. Did you realize, you know, um, the book that I'm doing with my dad, that's yeah. about the war stuff. And uh, it's about all his paintings that he did. But did you realize he was in a photography reconnaissance unit? He was a no, professional. I didn't. Yeah, he was a professional photographer. And I actually grew up with the dark room. And I hated doing photography at <laughs> university. But uh, yeah, it's been a fascinating journey with this book because um, learning about what, what these guys, they were 12 of them, I think, in his, in his um, wing. And they trout, they developed all the um, photos, like they were the eyes of the, of the army. So they were developing all along the route, um, fall yeah. just behind the front. So yeah, so I grew up with a, in that photography wow. environment. <laughs> and that, that led to a trip to, was it Bruges? Were you in Bruges? Or um, Brussels? Well, what happened actually, how I ended up in Brussels was, uh, I was at the artist project and um, this fellow uh, came up to me, European, and, you know, was talking to me. His name is Gregoire Volga saying he has a gallery in Brussels. And he was telling me, oh, you have to become international and, and about this art fair in Brussels. And I was like, oh, 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 I don't know. But there was another artist at the artist project who I had gotten to know and he had done the art fair with Gregoire. So he reinforced it was all real. It was actually a really neat, neat concept because it was a kind of a marriage between an art fair and a high-end gallery opening. So you had black tie dinners and you'd, he'd bring in the collectors and it was really, I mean, even Frank Stella was in this show. Like it was really an interesting experience. But um, wow. the reason, the other reason that I sort of said, okay, I'm going to do this is because it was just at the beginning of uh, exploring the book on my dad and we wanted to go to that part of the world one reason to um, retrace because I have his route and everything so we wanted to retrace the route and mm -hmm. find areas that he took pictures of but also in Bruges my mom and dad met in Bruges so it was a it was a trip we were already planning and it just uh, you know it just I, I'm sort of at a point now like I did the long haul of the art educator and all those years and I have two kids and and I'm sort of at this point now where I'm just looking at opportunities, and if they present themselves, I'm not going to, I'm trying not to be timid. I'm trying to go ahead and do it. So by going. Say yes, to, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. Like that's the philosophy I try to teach my kids. It. Say yes. Yeah, yeah try it. Try I mean, it. What, what am I going to lose? And <clears throat> there were so many, so many great things from, from this. And you meet other people. And then I met this other woman, and she had a connection to a gallery, quite an established gallery in Paris. And so I had soul of painting in Brussels, but then what do I do with these others? Because I'd have to bring them back. And she said, well, I'd like to take them. First of all, she wanted to have a show with this other person from the Brussels show in Paris. I thought, oh, okay, that sounds good. And that solves my problem because I don't have to get the art back. <laughs> but then that show fell apart, but she had this connection to this very established galleries in Paris. So she passed me work on there. So then... I uh, like I thought, okay, this is amazing. I'm with this gallery. So I, um, we did a trip, the second trip for my dad's book, and we went to Paris and went to the gallery, but they'd sold the painting, so it was like really exciting. And this was never in a plan, right? It was never in a plan. So right now I'm yeah. doing the video, this video promotion um, with Gregoire again, where uh, – um, you know, he's, I don't have, I'm like, I'm not good at that stuff. They, he's making the video. And also right now, uh, I saw him, uh, he uh, posted today, but it's in French. Um, he's organized a show in Brussels that my work will be part of 